Welcome to the Worship Leader Coaching Podcast, helping you go from leading songs to leading people. I'm your host, Caleb Holgerson. On this show, I talk with local church worship leaders about worship, leadership, creativity, and teamwork. We believe that by working together and learning from each other, we can build worshiping churches that are passionate about the presence of God. Let's get started. Well, y'all, we are back with another episode of the Worship Leader Coaching Podcast. And today I'm joined by Grammy nominated songwriter and author of the book Writing Worship, Chrissy Nordhoff. Chrissy, so good to have you on. How are you? Hey, Caleb. I'm good. How are you? Good to be with you today. Good, good. Thanks so much for for coming on. We're going to talk about songwriting a little bit and dig into your book a little bit. And um, I love this book. It's a book that I looked for for a long time before it was written. I wanted something written uh, for worship writers. And so i uh, really excited about, uh, about this book and everything you're doing. We'll get into all of that. But before we do, tell us a little bit about your story. How did you get started with songwriting and how did it become a career for you? Because that's, you know, there's a lot of us that dabble in it, but then you said, no, I'm going to make this happen. How did, how, how did all of that happen? Yeah, well, um, really, I fell in love with music at my grandmother's piano when I was really young, she played by ear and she was an incredible musician. And um, she, yeah, just totally by ear, everything that she did, she couldn't read music. But, um, but when she passed away, I was five years old and that I didn't realize until much later was the same year I started writing songs. Wow. So it just felt like there was some sort of torch passed to me in some way, spiritually. Yeah speaking and musically speaking. And, um, I just would sing little songs on the back pasture of my farm growing up. And I didn't know that's what I was doing. Um, my parents didn't really know, like I didn't necessarily come from a musical family. And, um, so anyways, uh, long story short, I kept developing that. I remember taking songs to my piano teacher and she didn't know what to do with them either. Um, but it really clicked when I was in college. I went to Anderson University in Indiana and I had a class there um, with Gloria Gaither who taught. Wow. Somebody. Yeah. Very just cool. A, sh- a short amount of time. And I was able to um, be a part of one of her classes. And um, I just remember something being etched really deep into my heart during that class. And um, I didn't know then, but it changed the trajectory of my future. Um, So I moved to Nashville after college and really chased the whole artist thing, had a record deal that fell through. And, um, you know, I, I kind of had to, I got to a point once that fell through that I had to make a decision if I was going to keep chasing the artist thing or not. Mm -hmm. Um, And I looked at my life really honestly, I was about ready to get married. I knew I wanted to have kids. Um, I personally knew that I probably couldn't juggle really well the whole artist career plus family. I know I know some people do it well, but everybody's different. And I just, I felt like God was telling me do the independent artist thing. And so I did that for about 10 years and we traveled with kids and I only wrote for myself, you know, my own songs. Um, but then uh, I felt a shift in my heart and found out the next week I was pregnant with my third child. And um, during that pregnancy, I wrote a song called Your Great Name. And that was the first song um, that I didn't sing that I wrote. So I didn't sing it for our church recording. Um, and it really broke my heart. And I felt like the Lord said, you know, stand in the choir. I just want to show you what I can do if you'll let go. And you stay home and raise your babies and let your heart travel. You don't have to travel. And so I let go. I completely let go. Um, And the Lord, in the way that only he can do, opened doors once that song had been released and it grew. And um, Natalie Grant picked it up. And and after that, many doors opened for me to be able to do more from a songwriting perspective. So I was an unsigned writer for... um, I think it's 19 years, wow. 17, 19 years, a long time. I was just writing by myself in my living yeah. room 
um, for my own stuff, for my own songs. Um, had a couple of smaller things, but really, you know, I, I wrote because I had to write. Um, and it wasn't necessarily I chose to chase that career path. It sort of happened, mm-hmm. but, um, but I really did it because I had to. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like I'm going to start picking up once you started putting it down. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Really wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, you recently released a book, Writing Worship, How to Craft Heartfelt Songs for the Church. What made you want to write that? What made you want to create tools for songwriters? Because that's stepping into something even a little bit different than writing or even writing for your church or writing other for other artists. Now you're trying to equip other people who want to do that. Uh, how'd you get, how'd you get there? Yeah. Well, um, when I had moved to Nashville, I remember just having a hard time trying to learn to navigate the industry. Mm -hmm. Um, there were a lot of nuances I didn't understand a lot of, um, a lot about songwriting I didn't understand. And I really prayed for a mentor for about 15 years. And, um, that 15th year I asked the Lord why he never answered that prayer because I thought it was a good prayer. And he said to me, um, be what you need. And so the first thing that I saw that I needed the most was community. So I started gathering songwriters, other songwriters. And instead of thinking about um, what I could maybe learn or gain from someone else, I tried to think about what do I have that I can give? You know, I don't know everything, but I've been here for 15 years and what can I give? And so started doing that. Um, and really then out of that community, I saw needs for other things. Um, and the very first tool I created was really for a writing trip that we went on to Scotland. Um, and it helped me set up our co-writing groups. And that was the songwriter personality test. Yes. And then we came home and, um, all the, all the people that were on the trip were saying, we want to learn, we need to learn more about songwriting. Can you teach us the basics? And so that was when, um, I basically wrote the mentorship, which is another, um, thing that we offer as a tool for songwriters. But so I would write for a week and then I'd share with them for a week. And then Uh we went through that process until it felt complete. And that was about an eight week, nine week process. Um, and that felt like such a deep dive that then we saw a need for a step one. And so that's when I wrote the book was really um, kind of to help introduce people into a, you know, wage your way in instead of I was throwing people in the deep end, you know, with the mentorship yeah. felt like, but just maybe more of an introductory way to share all of the things about songwriting. So many times, um, you know, people have a, a certain set of expectations about what it is and really for the most part, I think it's more about heart than people realize. Mm -hmm. And so just made sure through the book that um, we had time to explore what's really going on in your heart. Um, Because if you're truly writing songs that impact people, you have to be honest, Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to worship, you can't really fake worship, right? Um, Other genres, you can fake it. And it works, not worship, right? Um, And so that really gave me an opportunity to try to reach those people that needed help, you know, with those Mm -hmm. first first steps in that songwriting world and intermediate, I would say, too. So um, we talk about skill and we talk about heart and we talk about community and co-writing and purpose, why we do these things. Um, So my heart is really for that next generation coming behind me just to help them have the tools that I wished I had. Absolutely. Well, let's dive into just a couple of those tools. Um, Well, first, let's talk about purpose a little bit. I don't think I sent you any questions about purpose, but um, talk about kind of purpose and the heart behind writing, writing worship, writing worship songs, writing songs for your church. Why is that such an important thing for, for us to do? Yeah. Well, there's really, I see five purposes in writing these kind of songs. So I'll share those um, and I'll share a little more about the church too. But 
the first one is really just to bless God himself. You know, we have an opportunity to, um, to love and to um, praise and really just spend time with God one-on-one -on -one and really for no other purpose than just to bless him. Um, so that's the first one. The second one I've seen is where I sit down intending just to sing to him and he'll speak back to me in that moment. And nobody may hear these songs, you know, and that's not the point of those type of songs. The point is, you know, there are things happening uh, beyond what we can see in the heavenly realms that um, that are being affected by what we're doing in the in the secret place. Mm -hmm. So um, I know my life, there's several moments I can think of in several songs where God did that and changed me. Um, the third type of song is really to bless somebody else in their relationship with God. Um, and that might be somebody going through cancer, or it might be somebody that lost a loved one. Um, and those songs can minister and bring healing and, um, you know, specific, speak specifically into situations like nothing else. Huh. Um, and then the fourth way is for us to come together as a local body and worship God together in unity. And it's, it is important that we're writing the new songs. Um, even Psalms, our oldest songs, say, write the new songs. Right. So it's a constant reminder for us if we forget, yeah. hey, you guys need to be writing new songs. And I think it's because we can speak the voice of our local community. Mm -hmm. We know the lingo. We know um, the words. Like there might be, one word that your pastor's been speaking on that you can write a song about and bring a message to his melody and help it carry much farther than, you know, it would have without a melody. Yeah. Um, it brings unity to the church and, and it gives you an opportunity um, to create the sound of home in mm. your culture and in your church. And there's no other way to do that. Yeah. except for writing your own songs. And then yeah. um, the fifth purpose is really to be able to glorify God with the global church. Hmm. So, um, and that is where, you know, there's these huge songs that are meant to go around the world mm -hmm. because that gives us something to voice together when we, when we get together to sing and worship. But, um, you know, a lot of times people only see those number five songs when you sit in right. a room. Right. And they think that's the purpose behind why you're doing that. And really, if that is the purpose, you miss the most important things. Yeah. Um, and also, I'll say I've never tried to write a number five song and had that work. So I love that the first two things you mentioned, you know, don't really have to do with the congregation or anybody else. It's just they just have to do with God and just yeah. loving the Lord, worshiping him. You know, uh, I think that's that's really good and really important for us to remember, because like you said, you know, a lot of times, you know, we'll sit down and we're only thinking about the the, the, the type five song, yeah. a song that might go around the world. But I think a lot of times those start with the, the type one song. You know, I just yeah. I just want to worship you, Lord. I just want to be in your presence. So that's awesome. You mentioned earlier um, songwriter personality types, and that's something I really um, wanted to talk to you about on here because I, I know so many songwriters that this has helped um, learning their their personality type. Uh, you talk about it in chapter six of the book. Um, tell us a little bit about those, about the different personalities and why it's important for a songwriter to know theirs. Yeah. So I started noticing like, myself starting to categorize people when I'd walk into a room hmm. um, and I'd categorize people by someone I knew that worked similarly to how they were working um, or what, how they were gifted. So in my brain, mm -hmm. what I didn't realize I was doing was I was trying to make the most efficient use of our time and trying mm -hmm. to find ways to communicate with them um, that I know would work best in that situation. Yep. Um, and so I started coming up with, over time, these seven songwriter personalities. Um, and the first reason why it's important is because knowing who you are, just knowing your identity as a songwriter, 
it just gives you a confidence walking in the room. So um, many times, especially when I first started co-writing, um, I would feel a lot of pressure to have to carry everything. Like I'd have to carry melody or I need to play the piano or I need to, you know, know what chord would be best in a certain situation. And, um, you know, there was no like real definitive role and it made things much more um, challenging in a co-writing situation, but also I felt less confident. So I think um, identifying what your strength are is really important just for confidence and identity but also then knowing who you would work well with in a co-writing situation mm -hmm. is huge so whatever you're strong in um you can run with that and then look for co-writers that are strong in your areas of weakness basically mm -hmm. um and if you can do that and really there's three categories i came up with um and if you could choose one writer from each of the three categories, I think that's the best mix. Yeah. So um, we have the lyrics category and there's really only one writer in that category and that's our content writers. Mm -hmm. And um, they're exactly what they sound like, exactly what you would expect. Mm -hmm. um, they hear melodies and they can fill it with lyrics and they talk a lot. And <laughs> um, they usually keep things going in a co-write um usually very personable so those are our our lyric content writers then in the center of the graph i have kind of um a middle section that's called the crafters mm -hmm. and really their first gift is this craft and it can lean towards the music side or it can lean towards the lyric side um but really their very first gift is whatever this craft is so we've got in that category hearing prophetic Mm -hmm. um and that's what it sounds like they're more worried about listening they're worried about truth they want to know what god's doing now what he's about to do um and they can hear either music or they can hear lyrics it could go either way um and if you take the full test it'll tell you your score in every category gotcha. so if you're in the center if you're in one of those crafter um personalities you'll know which way you lean by your scores in the other categories gotcha so hearing prophetic um concept which mm -hmm. they're really all about keeping things on target um they can see the greater vision they're the guardrails mm -hmm. they kind of they can tell you what fits what doesn't fit but they see the bigger picture that's you that's me i'm a concept writer yeah <laughs> that's awesome yeah i love writing with concept writers because i need them yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm constantly going, wait, 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 that's a different idea. We need to get back over here. And yeah. That's really, yep. really good. And then the third one in that category is our structure writers. Mm -hmm. And so they like, you know, um, everything to match. They like the, mm -hmm. the rhythms to match. They like the rhymes mm -hmm. to match, mm -hmm. you know, so depending on their certain personality, they could lean towards the lyrics or the music side again. Gotcha. And then on the other side, we have our music category, which has our melody writers, which is exactly what it sounds like. Um, we have our chords arrangers, which they're really more concerned about that chord structure really than anything else. And that is what brings a song to life for them is having you know, the right chord at the right spots and at the right moments. And it does mm -hmm. add so much. Um, and then our final personality is the producer track personality in that music side, which they hear the entire landscape of a song as you're writing it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they like to track at the same time so they don't forget parts mm -hmm. and um, the landscape is most important to them mm -hmm. um, as they're writing. So you can see how, you know, those things can, they're such different giftings really. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. And can work really beautifully together in many situations. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny when, uh, before I took the songwriter test, you know, I would get pretty frustrated sometimes with writers I would write with who were um, more like producer track writers because they're, you know, Right. Oh, what about this drum beat? I'm like, we didn't even have this, this one line. What are you talking about? <laughs> a drum beat. I don't care about a drum beat. Um, yes. And now, you know, it's a lot easier to go, oh, 
no, they're, they're just seeing beyond what I'm seeing right now, uh, yeah. which is, so it's, it's pretty cool how that works together. Um, so, yeah. it, I mean, these personality types are, are, are huge when it comes to, to co-writing. Yeah. So what advice do you have for um, those listeners that are, you know, they want to start co-writing, maybe they've only written by themselves and they, you know, they want to step into this with, you know, somebody on their worship team or in their church, something like that. And they don't know where to begin. Where would you tell them to begin? Yeah. Um, I would say if at all possible, have everybody take that songwriter personality test. Mm-hmm. Where, where can they find it by the way? Yeah. Um, you can go to songwriterpersonalitytest.com. Perfect. And, um, and you should be able to pull it up there. It's free. Anybody can take it. Um, I think there's an extended version on there as well. That's a dollar maybe that gives you your full scores in every category. Um, but that's a great place to start. It'll set you up for success um, because, you know, I think what's challenging is, and, and you mentioned one challenge, Kayla, but I think sometimes when you're writing with people that are gifted the same as you, Mm -hmm. Um, or similarly sometimes you can butt heads and it can make for a hard co-write yeah Um, but that's a good place to start and then I would say um, bring a few ideas so you know bring a melody or bring a title or bring a line don't Mm -hmm. bring a full song that's you know it's it's different to do an editing process than a co-write in a co-write you want everybody to be able to contribute and then really you know, take time to get to know them as a person first Mm -hmm. and foremost, Mm -hmm. because relationship trumps songs. So I would say, just make sure you have time to talk, um, share ideas, see which one resonates. Don't be, you know, upset. If your idea isn't picked, you want it to have the best room to grow in. So, um, and then be so kind to one another and remember that it's a vulnerable process. Yeah. always be affirming in what mm. you're saying um even as you're saying no just say it in a kind way you know mm-hmm. or saying you don't like something just say you know i'm not sure maybe we could find uh, another way to say that or maybe this lyric feels more himish than mm-hmm. the rest of the lyric or you know just being mindful of how you're talking and communicating is huge mm-hmm. yeah that's great well, there's a couple other um, tools that, that you bring up in the book that I think are really uh, practical, psalming and two-way journaling. Now, those are two very different things, but um, can, can you talk about both of those here a little bit, yeah. um, just what they are, you know, how they've impacted your songwriting personally, um, anything, yeah. Yeah, so psalming um, really came out of just a private prayer time with the Lord and I was reading the Psalms and it just occurred to me oh my gosh these are not meant to be read they're meant to be sung these are songs and what did they sound like and I wondered what that you know what the things were that I began to see I'd see a chorus oh oh, okay that melody needs to repeat when we repeat the lyrics that should have been repeated right there And um, I just started seeing so much in the Psalms that I didn't see before when I started singing them. And um, I just felt like the Holy Spirit was really imprinting in my heart worship, the language of worship, Hmm. the structure of worship, the sound of worship as I was doing that. And I learned more about writing worship songs by singing the Psalms than by any other way. And I've been doing that now for... It's been well over 10 years, but, um, but you know, most of the time it's number ones, you know, I'm just singing to God and, um, I'm learning, I'm absorbing, um, both my heart and my writing, um, during those times. But every once in a while, there'll be a piece that I bring into a co-write and, um, and then that'll grow into something different, you know, and Mm -hmm. new and, um, famous four came out recently this last mm-hmm. year uh torn well sang it mm-hmm. but that one started as a psalming um at my piano out of psalm wow. 79 one morning and um brought it into a co- co-write and of course that grew and changed but um but he gives song ideas that way too yeah so um 
I would wow. highly recommend making that part of your daily practice. Yeah. And, and if you're doing it in the morning and if you're getting into that rhythm in the morning and you're listening and you're praying and you're reading the word, then when you get into a writing situation, um, it's no different. You're using the same muscle. So if you're working these things out in the morning and two-way journaling, you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, is another one of those things that I do on a daily basis in the morning. So mm -hmm. for years, you know, I, I really, I would pray to the Lord, but I never stopped to listen to him talk back to me. Mm -hmm. And he would interject things, you know, in during life, just as I was driving or as I was taking a walk or he would tell me things or I would hear him, but I never knew that I could literally in the moment, um, communicate with him like that. Hmm. And one of my friends showed me, I went to a, a journaling class, two-way journaling class, and, um, it changed everything for me. It opened up, um, a new way of communicating with God that I didn't know was possible. Yeah. So now I'll write down my questions, my prayers. I might, um, I might research a certain word, um, a scripture, like any of those things, mm -hmm. but I'll just talk to God about it. And I'll just, I'll write down my thoughts or the words or the research or whatever I'm working on. And then I'll stop and listen and he will speak back to me. Wow. Um, now, of course you have to compare it with scripture and there's all these, you know, of course it has to be, sure. of course they're, it's good. And, um, you know, an accountability type situation is good. If you're not sure, mm -hmm. share it with a friend that knows God's heart and, mm -hmm. and have them help you decipher, you know, is this God's heart for me? But I, I cannot, I cannot stress, um, how it's really deep in my relationship with God in ways that yeah. nothing else really has. Yeah. Um, and so that's a good way for songwriters to talk to God. Yeah. He'll give you song ideas that way too. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, well, let's say there's someone listening to this podcast says, okay, I, you know, after listening to this, I want to start writing. I, I want to do it. Um, what's your biggest piece of advice? My biggest piece uh, of advice. I know we just went over all this stuff that, you know, you talk about yeah. in your book and all this stuff. What's the number one thing they need to know? Um, it really is, I think, what in when it comes to songwriting, I would say more specific to mm -hmm. worship songwriters. If you're pressing into the heart of God, and if you're singing the Psalms, he'll show you. Let him teach mm -hmm. you how to write songs, because he will. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think a lot of times we think of songwriting almost as, um, I don't know, it can be be glorified in some weird ways sometimes mm -hmm. um but i also like the fact that nobody really knows who the songwriters are behind the songs because yeah. it's, it's the artist but um but it really is this beautiful communication with god is what songwriting really is and um if you press into him he will download to you what he wants you to say it's yeah. really as simple as that so yeah trust him, press into him and he'll give you what you need. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, exalting Jesus. It's all about right. worship when it comes to what we're doing. Um, kind of in the same vein, really. I mean, how, how can writers keep that first and foremost, you know, when they sit down in the writer's room, whether it's alone or with other people, um, you know, how can we make sure that that is what's on our mind and not writing the, you know, the type five song right. that goes around the world. Yeah. And that's something that I, I run across a lot, Caleb, when churches come to town or new people coming in to write stuff, you know, it is that wanting to shoot for the number five feeling that comes mm -hmm. into the room mm -hmm. a lot. And when that feeling is in the room, it's competing with the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would say, if you're going to write worship, make sure you're worshiping. Yeah. Um, and that seems very, you know, obvious, but I'm telling you what, nine times out of 10, um, worship songwriters forget to worship when they're writing a worship mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so in the moment when you're writing, let it come out of that 
time of worship. So you're going to write a worship song. You pick a theme, maybe. You have that conversation. You put that relationship first. You pray. And then maybe you worship. Just take yeah. five, 10 minutes and yeah. start really from that place of true worship and things will grow from that naturally, but you can't always grow them backwards. Mm -hmm. um, if you start with a worship, it'll be birthed from that place and yeah. it'll carry that imprint. You can't start with the template and then try to push it towards worship and then have that feel like true worship on the other side when it's mm. released. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Well, I'm out of questions, but <laughs> thank wow. you so much for, for, for joining us today and tell us, you know, where everybody can connect with you or writing worship, uh, where we can get the book, anything like that. Uh, because I know that there are songwriters listening to this that, want to find all those things uh there's songwriters that listen to this podcast on occasion that i'm going to send this specifically to because i know it's going to help them so uh, tell them where to find your stuff yeah um you can find my stuff at writingworship.co okay um, you can find it there and also christynordoff.com but all of our resources for songwriters are at writingworship.co and um, awesome the personality test, there's courses, the book, the mentorship. Um, so all of that is there. Awesome. I'll link all of those in the, in the show notes for anybody listening. Chrissy, thank you so much. It's been so fun to have you. Caleb, thank you so much for what you're doing for the kingdom. And um, thank you so much for your support of what we've been doing too. It means a lot. Thanks for listening to the Worship Leader Coaching Podcast. For books, one-on-one -on -one coaching, and other resources, visit our website, worshipleader.me, or connect with us on Instagram at worshipleadercoaching. 